looking at uh, the Italian National Council of Research. Um, so I'm uh, also part of the OpenF team, uh, in particular I'm uh, the technical director. Uh, in this presentation, however, I will not speak of open air. I will actually uh, speak of an activity that is uh, being uh, performed in the context of another project which is called iCordi, but the activity that I'm going to describe uh, is uh, strongly linked uh, to what uh, we are doing in open air. Actually, it's funded by iCordi, but it's uh, actually uh, done uh, in collaboration with uh, open air. So what I will do is that uh, I will first uh, uh, briefly introduce uh, what is ICARD and uh, a related initiative, the RDA, that you may be aware of. And then I will uh, explain uh, briefly uh, the prototype uh, that we are developing in the context of this project and uh, uh, the issues of interoperability that are behind it. So let me uh, start with uh, ICARD. Uh, so ICARD is a coordination action that started in September 2012. Uh, and uh, the objective is uh, uh, to establish uh, a coordination platform uh, between uh, Europe and e US uh, to discuss uh, interoperability um, across infrastructures. Mm. So what happened is that uh, uh, while uh, uh, Europe was uh, actually, we were preparing this proposal and Europe was going in this direction, uh, a similar initiative was launched in the US. Uh, at the time it was called the Data Web Forum. And uh, in parallel, uh, more or less at the same time, uh, uh, the Australian National Data Service uh, start also uh, having the idea of uh, funding something similar. So actually what happened was that uh, Europe, at a certain point, US and Australia decided actually to merge the three initiatives uh, and give rise to uh, what is called the Research Data Alliance. So what is this? Uh, you might have heard about this because there is a lot of people that uh, now are uh, uh, participating in this, uh, starting to participate in this uh, uh, initiative. And uh, the main goal uh, is, uh, as you say, to facilitate specific short-term effort that accelerate the sharing and the exchanges of research data. So again, the problem is uh, to make uh, infrastructure interoperable and the, the, the instruments that they are uh, setting up uh, are working groups uh, that should work uh, on uh, uh, sharing uh, and agree on, uh, for example, uh, standards, uh, on uh, principle for uh, uh, infrastructures, uh, on policy, on best practice, and so on. So this is uh, the goal, and you can find more information on the website of the initiative. So what I want to say is, uh, so there is a lot of interest uh, behind uh, uh, Research Data Alliance, but why? So I think that it's important to understand the reason. So what do we have now at the moment? We have the, so there are a number of, uh, there are a number of uh, data infrastructure that are in place now. Mm -hmm. However, uh, you should uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, an infrastructure, uh, there is no a single notion of infrastructure. The infrastructure is always created to serve someone. So there is uh, uh, a group of people that uh, has a particular needs. So instead of implementing a service by themselves, what they do is that they agree that they have a common set of services that they need. And instead of implementing by themselves, uh, they create an infrastructure. And then each of them uh, use the services provided by the infrastructure. So it means that it's, uh, let's say, driven uh, by the needs of the community that actually decides to set up the infrastructure. So if you look at the infrastructure that exists now, <laughs> you will find that there are many, many different kind of infrastructure. So everyone, uh, and this is also a problem of language, because when we, I speak about an infrastructure, it's not the same notion that you have of infrastructure. So, for example, there are uh, organizations that have created infrastructure for supporting the storage, creation, preservation of large amount of data. So they are offering services for the preservation of data. There are others that, for example, have created the infrastructure for uh, giving uh, a uniform access uh, to a set of uh, uh, different uh, data sources. So they have aggregated data and they give uh, only uh, an access point, uh, uniform access point. There are others that uh, have created, for example, infrastructure for uh, not only for giving access to the data, but also to support uh, data analysis and mining. It's in the, 
the, um, it's the vision of the cloud. No? You, you, there is an infrastructure who offer a service for not only giving access to the data, but also have uh, tools, for example, for mining the data. And this is that given as a service uh, to the external community. And there are infrastructure like, for example, uh, open air, which actually uh, are supporting and of offering services to a community of scientists and researchers. So if you look at all these different, they have different services. And, uh, and then uh, there is also the other dimension that there might be this kind of uh, uh, infrastructures and there is, uh, these are being created for, uh, so the bioinformatics, bioinformatics uh, there is uh, an infrastructure for volcanologists and so on and so forth. So this is a very, very heterogeneous universe. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened is that, uh, however, setting up an infrastructure is very expensive. <coughs> so what happened is that uh, there is now People start realizing that uh, when you create an infrastructure, especially an infrastructure like, for example, open air, which is giving uh, services to <coughs> of a high level, uh, uh, you, have you cannot re-implement all the stack. And so if there are already infrastructures that provide certain services, uh, uh, this infrastructure should actually use the, the services that are provided by others or the content that is provided by others. So what is happening is that uh, a notion of uh, uh, what we call the infrastructure ecosystem is being created. So I want to create an infrastructure, but at the same time, my infrastructure can exploit something that another infrastructure is providing. And so you understand that uh, in this uh, vision, uh, the notion of uh, interoperability is key. So it's uh, in order to implement uh, this infrastructure ecosystem, uh, the key point uh, is to implement uh, interoperability. And uh, uh, I also want to uh, stress again what uh, Jeffrey said before. Uh, interoperability is a key issue, but interoperability means a lot of different things because it depends on uh, the, the task and uh, the reason why you want to have the interoperability. So if you, you may want to have interoperability because you want to be able to discover resources that are published by another infrastructure, but you may also want, uh, once you have discovered, you want to access the, the resource, or you want to use uh, the resource. So according to what you want to do, the problem of interoperability becomes more and more complex. So simply access, retrieving is uh, one aspect. But if you want to reuse, uh, you need to, uh, to understand what you have. Uh, it's much, mo much more complex. And so this is, uh, let's say, the reason why um, there is uh, all, the, all these people is speaking, uh, there is a, a lot of interest in uh, interoperability. Now, so what I want to say is that uh, interoperability is a key issue also for, uh, in the context of open air. Uh, because open air, the open air mandate uh, is uh, to create an infrastructure for scientific information. Mm? But when you think about uh, uh, so it means uh, essentially to serve a scientist in what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So, but if you look at uh, the process that the research does, uh, uh, actually in order to perform its work, uh, it uh, needs to retrieve access and use a large variety of resources. Mm -hmm. So it's not only accessing the article, it needs to access, as we have already uh, discussed, uh, uh, the, the data set, uh, but uh, for example, it needs to, uh, as I was trying to point out earlier, the tools uh, for doing analysis and monitoring, but in order to use the tool, I need to have, uh, for example, access to the documentation of the tool, and so on. So, or I when I produce uh, something, uh, um, I elaborate the data, then I need, uh, for example, to I produce a graph. So maybe the scientist need to have access to the graph, uh, or, uh, for example, if the, the, uh, the, mm, the data are projected on a map, uh, I need to have access to the map. So. What is happening is that in the everyday work of the researcher, the researcher access a lot of different elements. So what is happening is that, um, and this has already been mentioned by Alicia, uh, the publication model is changing. So there is, uh, in, in some cases, is the author itself that try to um, publish together with the paper a lot of connected information that are useful for those that uh, read, the, uh, try to uh, understand the research results. So he's uh, uh, pointing to a number of 
relationship. So this is explicit in the new uh, publication model. No? And there are uh, a lot of uh, different models that have been, have been, have been proposed at the moment. But this is uh, what is done explicitly by the author. So what we have seen, for example, in, is, uh, in open air, is that uh, open air is trying to do something uh, a little bit different. So uh, it's essentially um, look at the paper and they try automatically uh, to, for example, in, try to understand uh, which, are, uh, which is the data set that uh, is linked uh, to the paper. So this is try something that is not done by the author, is done automatically, and maybe the author can actually validate uh, what has been suggested by open air. And, uh, and this only, uh, let's say, and this is done uh, in the context of open air, is done by working on uh, uh, the metadata. So we harvest metadata, both uh, uh, metadata for, from papers, and metadata for data set, and now by analyzing uh, the metadata of the two, we are trying to establish this link, or um, to identify possible link. So in the context of uh, uh, ICODI, we are trying to make a, a different experiment. Uh, not so for the time being, it's just an experiment. So instead of uh, starting necessarily from the paper, we want to start uh, from any, as, as, as any of these uh, uh, different uh, resources. So for example, uh, we can uh, start, uh, the idea is that uh, someone, for example, can identify uh, a relevant uh, experimental data set. So he wants to understand, for example, in which, uh, uh, that given the data set, uh, uh, which is uh, the working data set that has been used for making an experiment. So you know that uh, there are uh, observation data, for example, and someone uh, before doing analysis select which are the most interesting observation data for, for example, for making a model. And then uh, um, uh, given this work uh, data set, it can go to the paper. And maybe once he has the paper, he goes uh, to another paper that uh, uh, contains uh, complementary information. Mm? So, so the difference with, within uh, the experiment uh, of this experiment prototype is this one. We want to start from uh, a particular uh, point. And instead of uh, harvesting the metadata, the idea is that we want to essentially, uh, from the technical point of view, uh, we want to be able to query, so not harvesting the metadata, but querying directly the different information sources. Now you understand that uh, from the interoperability point of view, that is the topic of this workshop, uh, this is uh, maybe very complicated because uh, uh, the different uh, resources that I'm talking, uh, I'm referring, may also be hosted by different infrastructures. So just uh, to, uh, I don't know, <laughs> probably you cannot see anything. However, just to show that uh, this prototype is uh, a, it's a running prototype, it's still a prototype for the interface uh, in this way. So you can search, for example, here we are searching in, in uh, data site, uh, you receive result. Then what you can do is uh, you can say, I've received this result, I want to search for um, another resources related to this, for example, in driver. And uh, uh, the relation that I'm trying to explore is uh, I want to have, for example, something that has been uh, published by the same author and uh, uh, is described in terms of the same uh, or similar keywords, for example. No? So this is, uh, and then at this point, you retrieve uh, the result also on, uh, 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 that has been uh, located in the other source. So uh, this is, uh, as I told you, this is only a first prototype. Uh, the effort uh, is in understanding how we can uh, uh, afford this uh, interoperability issue. Um, and an important point uh, is that we are creating this prototype in such a way that the criteria, when you say relation, uh, relation by maybe relation, of, uh, as I told you, relation by author, but it may be relation for many other type of relation. So this must, should be configurable. Uh, we have adopted a very simple algorithm and we want to have uh, uh, more selective algorithms. And uh, another uh, important point is that we want to integrate in this uh, so, uh, um, also what we call the authority registry uh, that are uh, essentially, um, um, it's like authority file in, uh, in um, so like for example, ORCID. Uh, uh, that of general applicability. So when you say, I want to have uh, uh, 
a data set from a similar author, I can use ORCID uh, in order to, uh, let's say, retrieve better quality results. And this is, uh, uh, as far as ORCID is of general applicability, but we are thinking also more, if we identify, for example, particular collection, we, we are thinking, for example, to use uh, explicit resources that are creating very domain-specific uh, in a domain-specific area in order to refine uh, the, the relation. For example, if you are, uh, there is, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with Catalog of Life, uh, which is uh, the, the taxonomy of all the specific, of all the species. Uh, mm? And then you can, uh, uh, if you are in, the, in uh, for example, looking at the biodiversity area, you can uh, search for something and then use uh, this uh, taxonomy in order to actually, for example, look for all the other information that have a different common name, for example, a different uh, name and a different language and so on. So we this is the way in which you want to uh, retrieve better results. So uh, this is my concluding slide. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, you understand that uh, the difficulty of what we are uh, doing is uh, uh, certainly in the fact that uh, what are uh, our sources for this uh, is, uh, is not a fixed set of sources. We have uh, an open set of data sources, so we need uh, as uh, uh, computer scientists uh, to find solutions that uh, are not uh, tailored uh, for the 10 data sources that we have now, but in we might be able to expand. And the other um, uh, actually consideration that I want to say, to say, and this is my concluding um, consideration, is that uh, one of the problem is that uh, we are uh, linking resources that uh, traditionally has been managed by different organizations. So we are speaking of uh, libraries mm, that have uh, been uh, uh, dealing, uh, managing, and curating uh, the the content, describing the content in a certain way. We are dealing with data centers that have been uh, uh, doing the same operation but in a completely different way. We are dealing with uh, software initiatives, uh, software repositories uh, that uh, have been working in a different way. So what is happening now is that uh, the three start uh, moving each in the direction of the others because there are now data journals, uh, so data centers try to do something that uh, is what typical of uh, libraries, while libraries uh, are uh, trying to, uh, let's say, also maintain uh, the data, so they are trying to move in the direction of data centers. But you see the interoperability is also complex because we have also to, um, let's say, change uh, something that is historical and uh, the three different uh, type of organization should actually start uh, uh, merging and exchanging experiences. So this is actually my last slide. Thank you.